I want to talk about how you compute the future value when you have a series of cash flows. Now we've talked about how you compute the future value when you have one cash flow, but suppose you have a series of cash flows. In this case, in this example, I'm going to assume that you're going to get $2,000 a year for five years, and your first cash flow begins in year one, and I've drawn the picture already here. And we want to know how much will be in our account if the interest rate is 10% in year five after we make the last deposit. So let's think about it. Well, the first 2,000 is just, or the last 2,000, I'm sorry, the last 2,000 in year five is just 2,000. We don't have to do anything to it because it's already in its future value terms. It's already in its year five amount. So let's write that down. We've got 2,000 here. How about the year four cash flow? The year four cash flow is going to compound one period. So it's going to be 2,000 times 1.10. So let's draw that in here. So this is going to be 2,000 times 1.1. And that's what, 2,200? So we have 2,000 and 200. So this is multiplied by 1.10 so times that. How about in year three? In year three this is going to compound one two periods so the two thousand dollars in year three will grow by an amount times 1.10 squared so let's do that 1.1 y to the x2, that's how we raise it to a power, multiply it by the 2,000, and we get $2,420. Alright, our year 2 cash flow is going to grow 1, 2, 3 periods. So, let's draw down here. and across and so we're going to multiply that times 1.10 cubed and so what's that? That's going to be 1.1 raised to the third power times 2000 and so we get 2600 and 62. And then our final cash flow here in year one is going to grow one, two, three, four periods. And so we have times 1.10 to the fourth. So 1.1 why did the why did the x raise it to the fourth times two thousand? We get two thousand nine hundred twenty eight and twenty cents. And let's just add one, two, three, four, these five numbers together. So I'll just add going up two six six two plus two four two zero plus twenty two hundred plus two thousand and we get twelve thousand so after we've added all of these up twelve thousand two hundred and ten dollars and twenty cents so let's think about what we've done here if you want to find the future value of a number of cash flows, all you have to do is find the cash, find the future value for each cash flow, and then add them up. 
Okay, you can't add 2,000 plus 2,000 plus 2,000. That's not correct. That would add up to 10,000, and that's not correct because it doesn't account for the interest. But if you figure out how much this amount of money deposited in year one is worth in year five, and you figure out how much money this is worth in year five, you can add them together. And that's what we've done. We've brought everything out to year five, and we've added them up. All right. In this case, all of these numbers happen to be the same. They don't have to be. And when they're all the same, this is a special case referred to as an annuity. And we'll talk about annuities later. But there's actually a simpler formula. So if you have the same series of, of payments, it's much easier to do. There's a formula. Your calculator does it for you. It's actually very easy to calculate the future value of this. It's not quite as tedious. You don't have to do one step at a time. But had these been different numbers, if this were 2,000 and this were 1,000 and this were 4,000, you'd have to do it this way. And so um, this is how you find future value. You have to bring everything to the same period. Um, to do present value, it's the opposite case. You just bring everything back to the same time period. As long as everything is in the same time period, at the same date, you can simply add them together. And so that's the basic premise of um, time value of money, future value, and present value. And we're going to use these tools throughout the course to value securities, to figure out how much money you have to have in your account for retirement, to figure out what your loan repayment will be on a mortgage, etc. So this is important stuff and you need to figure out and you need to master this in order to move on in the course.